Okay guys, welcome to Simon's Equipment. These are our trucks. We have four of these. They're uh, 2001 Stewart and Stevenson. To just get things started, uh, what I'm gonna do is show you how to start and operate the truck. So system controls essentially. Okay, so the first thing to note about these trucks is that they're cab over engines. The engine sits right underneath the cab. Um, so because of that, these are a little bit tricky to get inside of. As you can see, there's a door handle here. Here's your door handle. This is going to be your first step that you take a uh, step on. You want to put your left foot here, and then you want to put your right hand right in the door jam. There's a handle here. And then you have another handle right here that you're going to want to put your right hand on. And uh, you're going to want to say hi to Blueberry. Okay, so now that we're in the cab, this is our door handle to get us out of here. Push that open. You've got your handle that's right here in the door jam once again. You want to put your foot down here, and then as you come out, you've got your handle right here. Now, it's really important that you've always got three points of contact coming out of this truck because, as you can see, it's kind of a long ways down. You do not want to fall out of this truck. You always want to be facing the truck when you're coming out. You do not want to be facing outwards because then you can't have three points of contact when you're getting out of the vehicle. So just be sure that when you're getting in and out, you're getting in and out safely. It can be done, but it can also be done incorrectly. So just be careful. Okay, so now that we're in the truck, uh, let's go over the operator controls. This truck doesn't have keys. You will have a key for the door, but that's just to lock the cab so that you can get in and out and store things safely inside. The way we turn the vehicle on is this button right here. This is the ignition switch. And then this is gonna be your start button. So that's how we fire the truck up. And then in order to turn it off, we just click the ignition button again. Okay, so we have ignition, start. Uh, the next important thing is gonna be your light switches, which is right here. These are the lights. Uh, I know they're kind of odd looking. So the way they work is, you see how it says lock here? Uh, you need to unlock the toggle switch in order to turn the lights on. So you have to flip it up and flip it to the side. Now, notice how this alarm went off. That's because my ignition isn't on. If my ignition is on, and then I go to turn these, the alarm stays off. Now the reason for that is so that when you get out of the vehicle, if the lights are still on, it's gonna let you know. Um, and in order to turn the lights off, you don't have to use the lock. You only have to use the lock to turn them on. So on, off. Now as far as these um, toggles go, don't worry about them. That's just military stuff. Um, BO stands for blackout. So you have blackout marker, blackout drive. This toggle is for your um, panel lights. So you have panel bright, which is where I like to keep it. And you have panel dim, panel off, and then uh, you have park brake down here, which I'm not exactly sure why it's on that toggle, but usually I just keep them up here. It's fine. They stay off as long as um, your main switch is in the off position. So as long as this is off, everything is off. Uh, to turn them on, like that. Turn them off, like that. Another really important switch is this one right here. So this is your retarder. Now, it's a three-way switch. So you have a warm-up, you have an off, and you have a retard. So really, we're only gonna be using the off and the retard. So the warm up, it's never gonna be cold enough that we actually have to hit the warm up switch. Um, so you're really just gonna be in the off position and then anytime you need to use the retarder, which, you know, uh, be very liberal with this button um, because it'll keep from uh, having brake failure. Uh, you wanna use this anytime you're going down a steep hill or anytime you're coming to a stop when you're loaded, you wanna use that switch as much as possible, but at the same time, don't drive with it on you yeah, definitely want to be able to turn it off because it's just hard on the system if you drive with it on. If you have a CDL, you know what this button is. And if you've ever driven a school bus, you'll know what this button is. It's pretty self-explanatory. You have your neutral button, you have your drive, and you have your reverse. 
Now this mode button is for the um, six by six. If you need to get out of a sticky situation, you can hit this mode button and then you can manually go through the gears. But what also happens when you hit the mode button is that it locks the differential, uh, sorry, that it, it locks the transfer case so that the power being delivered to the wheels is 50-50 front axle and rear axles. So just use that sparingly. It's really not an important button. For the most part, you can really just get around with, you know, these three buttons. Okay, moving on to the PTO. This is a hot shift PTO. You know, we don't have a clutch. This is an automatic transmission. And so when we flip this switch on, your PTO is gonna engage automatically. So what that means is that there's a clutch on the PTO. So because of that, we wanna be able to, we wanna make sure that we're engaging this button when we're at idle. We don't wanna have our engine revved up when we click this in or out. So anytime we wanna operate our sprayers or if we wanna draft water, we wanna start at idle, flip this on, and then like, it's, let's say we're drafting, then you go to the high idle. That's gonna bump it up so that we get more pressure and then we can draft faster. Um, and then also in reverse, when you're going to shut it down, you want to turn the high idle off and then turn your PTO off because you don't want a high idle when that clutch is engaging and disengaging. And then as far as the sprayers go, they're pretty self-explanatory. They're all marked. As you're driving along, you can open and close whatever sprayer you need to, depending on the job that you're working on. And then say if it's nighttime and uh, you have to back up to somewhere, you have reverse lights here. And so if you're in an inspection and they ask to see your reverse lights, this is the button you want to push. It's just right next to the PTO. So that just about covers it. You know, you have your uh, HVAC controls here. This is an inflation system. It's been disconnected. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about this thing. Um, your turn signals and your wiper blades are all on this. Your horn is actually at the end right here. So take note of that because this doesn't have a horn in the center. It's actually on your um, turn signal switch. So you just push that in and that will honk the horn. Let's see here. And it is a very weak horn for such a cool looking truck. It's pretty pathetic. Other than that, I think that's everything that's really going to be important. Uh, any other little nuanced details we can kind of go over uh, during training. But I just wanted to give you guys kind of a, uh, a brief overview of the system controls so that when you show up and we start training, you kind of already have a foundation to go off of. Okay, so that's it for system controls. Now let's move on to drafting.